Let me now talk about a very similar definition. That is the definition of the infimum of a set. Let A be a subset of the real line that is non-empty and bounded below. That means A is non-empty and it has a lower bound. Now, a real number beta is called the greatest lower bound of A if, first of all, beta has to be a lower bound of A. That means beta is less than or equal to x for all x in A. Secondly, beta is the largest number among all lower bounds of A. That means if m here is a lower bound of A, then m has to be less than or equal to beta. For example, A here is the interval from 2 to infinity. As you can see, A has many lower bounds, but 2 here is the largest or the greatest lower bound of A. So, again, the greatest lower bound of A satisfies these two properties. To have a complete picture for the lower bound of a set, by convention, if A is non-empty and not bounded below, then the infimum of A is defined as minus infinity. And in the case where um, A is the empty set, any real number is a lower bound of A. So by convention, the gradient lower bound of A is infinity. From the definition of the infimum of a set and what has been done for the supremum, we obtain the following important properties. Let A be a non-empty subset of the real line that is bounded below. Then the infimum of A exists as a real number. This property follows from the completeness axiom. The second property says that beta is equal to the infimum of A if and only if, first of all, beta has to be a lower bound of the set A. That means beta is less than or equal to x for all x in A. And the second important property says that for any epsilon greater than zero, there exists an element A of the set A such that A is strictly less than beta plus epsilon. The second property here is very important. For example, now, A is the interval to, to infinity. As you can see, beta equals 2 is the greatest lower bound of A or the infimum of A. Now, if you add a positive real number epsilon to beta, as beta is the greatest lower bound, beta plus epsilon cannot be a lower bound of A. So there should be some element A in A such that A is strictly less than beta plus epsilon. Similar to the situation with the supremum, this is a very important property that we are going to use throughout the course. Now, the third property says that if um, beta here is the supremum, I'm sorry, if beta is the infimum of A, of the set A, then we can find a sequence Zn not converted to beta. And again, similarly to the case where we deal with the supremum, this property also holds in the case where A is not bounded below. So in general, if you have a non-empty subset of the real line, then you can always find a sequence in that set such that lim of An as n approaches infinity is equal to the infimum of the set or the greatest lower bound of the set.